Rinpoche, you're very good at explaining the vast teachings of Tibetan Buddhism very simply. And one of the things you say, Rinpoche, you talked about this object-orientated meditation and subject-orientated meditation. And so we were talking about breath meditation and you said in object meditation, object-orientated meditation, the breath is really important. But in subject-orientated meditation, the awareness of the breath, the awareness is more important. Knowing the breath is more important. And then this had some differences. So if distraction comes up in object oriented meditation, it's to be avoided because you want a strong focus on the breath because it's the most important. But then you explain how if distractions come up in subject oriented meditation, then it can become a support for awareness. And, um, and so you always talk about pizza, Rinpoche. So if I'm doing object oriented meditation, breath, 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 and pizza comes up, pizza a problem, yeah? <laughs> Uh, but if I'm doing subject oriented meditation, actually pizza comes, then it can be a support because what's important is continuation of awareness. And so, Rinpoche, I was wondering, both traditions, object oriented meditation and subject oriented meditation talk about shamatha, right? And so I was wondering if you could compare shamatha in the two different traditions. So like in object oriented meditation, we often hear about do long sessions and, you know, Maitreya talked about nine stages and we develop, you know, one sixth of a day we meditate and you have pliancy and, and then you, uh, you have shamatha based on that. Whereas in, in the subject oriented or in Ma Mudra tradition, we would talk about the, um, you know, maybe waterfall, river and, uh, and ocean at, at day. Could you talk about the difference of what shamatha means in these two different approaches, please, Rinpoche? Yeah, so actually the both tradition, what we call, we, uh, we talk about the eight jhanas or nine jhanas, all are there. But the, the object-oriented meditation is normally what we call the view, view meaning the, when we talk about the fundamental quality of the mind, what we call main definition of the mind is taking an object. So mind need to have object all the time. So without object, there will be no mind. So for example, mind cannot see itself. Like our face cannot look at itself or no matter how much the, the sore, very sharp, but cannot cut itself. So of course the, that part is true, but at the same time, there's a different uh, example, what we call self-luminosity, self-clarity. So that is we use the lamp, flame, the candle flame or any fire. This flame, of course, if you lead the flame in the dark house, illuminate things around the tables, the people, everything. So it's it illuminating object. So you have object, make things object clear. But at the same time, the lamp, the flame is the light. And in order to see the flame, you don't need to use flashlight. So that is what we call self-awareness, self-luminosity, self-awareness. Um, so the, the tradition based on the, the, op, the subject oriented is the main focus of, of awareness itself. Sometimes to be awareness, not necessary to rely on object. Mind is like light. Mind is like flame illuminated by itself. So for that cases, the most important is the, the awareness is important. You can take any object as support for meditation or without object also okay. So for example, as you said, if you to be aware of the breath and the pizza comes, if the pizza becomes so disturbing to you, you can to be aware of pizza. So watching breath, watching pizza, same thing. Both can be support for meditation. So then eventually what we call not just breath, five sensory objects, the form, sound, smell, test, sensation, five sensory objects, all become support for awareness. Not only that, the thought and emotion, 
can be support for awareness. So what develop here, the concentration, samadhi meaning concentration, one-pointedness, awareness meaning the real concentration comes being with awareness. Though object is changing, but awareness is continued. Like river coming from the mountain, even go to the different valley, different town, different place, but one continuation of the river. So that case, like uh, you can have jhanas, of course, before the jhana, what we call waterfall experience, river-like experience, lake without wave experience. So when we reach the lake without wave, wave experience, then maybe the excess of jhana, then after that, the pliable of the mind and body, what we call Xinjiang. So when that fully present, then maybe the first jhana may achieve. So it is not necessary to go to vivashana. Always have to have jhanas, not necessary. But if you have jhana and practice vivashana, also wonderful. So then vivashana at the beginning more clear. So there are various uh, tradition that is flexible, especially in the Mahamudra style. 